we're going to be doing it in three dimensional planes. Uh, so similar to duty space, except we must now introduce a Z coordinate uh, for points and a Z component for vectors. So there's no scalar equation for a line in 3D space because a line in, in space does not have a unique normal. Okay. So the vector equation, so the vector equation of a straight line in the space of the form of OP is equal to vector OP0 plus T times the direction vector. Or what we did before is R, vector R is equal to X0, Y0, Z0 plus T times the first component of the direction vector plus the second component of the direction vector plus the third component of the direction vector. So x, y, z is the position vector of any point on the line. x, 0, y, 0, z, 0 is the position vector of some particular point on the line. So when I specify a specific point, that's going to be x, 0, y, 0, z, 0, and d1, d2, d3 are the direction vector of the line. And t is an element of the real number system. So t can be any real number. So note the numbers D1, D2, and D3, which are components of the direction vector, are also known as direction numbers of the line. So if it's positive, it goes on the positive axis. If it's negative, it goes on the negative component of the axis. So we have the parametric equations, which we learned last time, of a straight line in space has the form x is equal to x0 plus d t d d1 t y is equal to y0 plus d t1, uh, z is equal to z0 plus d3 times t. So this is exactly the same thing that we learned last time. The symmetric equation is the same thing, except we have my z component that is added at the end. So we have this. This is the only new thing that is there, where d1, d2, and d3 cannot equal 0. So let's move on to the first example. So we have state the direction vector and point on each line. So remember our point has to do with our numerator. So if I turn this guy into a numerator, it's going to be x1 over three is equal to, I have to multiply this guy by negative one because I need y minus or plus a specific point and times by negative one. So I get y minus five over negative two. is equal to z minus zero over one. So my direction vector has to do with my denominator. So who can tell me what my direction vector for this parametric set of equations is going to be? What is my direction vector going to be? Remember, it has to do with my denominator. So who can tell me my direction vector? Three, negative two, one. Thank you, Priyanshu. Perfect. Who can tell me what my specific point is going to be? So who can tell me what my specific point is going to be? This has to do with my numerators and we have to isolate for x. So what would my specific point be? One, five, and zero. Thank you, Priyanshu. It's gonna be one, comma, five, comma, zero. Okay, so easy peasy. Just came in. Oh, thank you. So the next one you have is x plus three is equal to y minus four, and z is equal to six. So this guy's going to be over one. If 
is x, y, or z is equal to a specific number, this automatically implies that my z component or my d3 is going to be zero. So in this case, my direction vector is going to be one, negative three, and zero. And my point that I'm going to be using is equal to negative three, four, and positive six. So now let's go to my last and final example. So I have 2x minus 2x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 3y plus 4 over negative 1 is equal to 1 minus 2z over negative 1. So first what I have to do is I'm going to multiply this guy by negative 1 because I want it in terms of 2z minus a number. So I'm going to rewrite as 2x minus 2 over 3 is equal to 3y plus 4 over negative 1, which is equal to 2z minus 1 over positive 1. So now what I want to do is I need to factor out a number from my numerators, from all of my numerators. We're going to take each one separately. So 2x minus 2 uh, over 3, we're going to take that as a separate number or as a separate equation. Same with 3y plus 4 over negative 1 and same with 2z minus 1 over positive 1. So I want to manipulate these in terms that when I take my factor and fold it back in, I get x as a, just x by itself without the two, which means I have to multiply by the reciprocal of two. I'm gonna take one half times two x minus two over one half times three, which is equal to one over three times three y plus four over negative one times one over two, or times one over three, sorry, which is equal to one over two times two z minus one over one times one over two. <clears throat> so now all I'm gonna do is simplify each and every one of them individually. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I do not want a coefficient in front of my variable. Okay, so I want to have, I want to leave 2x and manipulate so I can just be x minus a number, same with y, y minus a number, and same with z, z minus a number. So I'm going to get x minus 1 over 3 over 2 is equal to y plus 4 over 3 over negative 1 over 3, which is equal to z minus 1 over 2 over 1 half. Now the same rule applies. My direction vector is going to be my denominators, and my position point is going to be uh, my numerators. So my direction vector is going to be over 2, negative 1 over 3, and one half, and my position, my point, is going to be one, negative four over three, and one over two. However, there are certain rules that we need to follow, okay? My direction vector is not in the correct form, okay? I'm 
not incorrect form, which means that it's not simplified. Okay, we need to simplify my direction vector. And what I mean is that I need to have the following things. I need to have a positive first component. I need to have no fractional components, which means I cannot have fractions. And I cannot have any common factors, so no common factors. So basically what I'm looking for is a common denominator that I can multiply all of my components in the direction vector by. So in this case, the only thing I can multiply my direction vector to make everything a whole number and to have my first component be positive is 6. So I'm going to take my direction vector and multiply it by 6. And then this is going to give me... Nine, negative two, and three. Okay, my point stays the same, which is fine. However, my direction vector, because I can't have any fractional components, is now going to be nine, negative two, and three. So if I were to write my equation, it would be r is equal to my point, which is one, negative four, over three, and one over two, plus, S times 9, negative 2, and 3. No, P, the, point doesn't, the point does not need to have any restrictions. So you can leave the point as is. The last few examples, the last few examples get very easy. Uh, it's just it's nothing too crazy. I think there's a couple more. I think we have like two more pages to get through, uh, but that's completely fine. So the next example is we want to find vector and parametric equations of the line through points A, which is 1, 7, negative 3, and B, which is 4, 0, 2. So in order for me to find my direction vector, I need to find vector AB. So remember with vector AB, it's going to be head minus tail. So which means vector AB is going to be 4 minus 1, comma 0, minus 7, and 2 minus negative 3. Which means my direction vector is going to be 4, negative 7, and 5. So my vector equation is very simple to find. It is in the form of x, y, z is equal to my point plus t times uh, the direction vector. So I'm going to have my vector equation it's going to be x, y, z. I think it's 3 for the direction vector. Which one? Oh, 3. 4 my minus. Whoops. That's fine. Thank you. So I got my point 1, 7, negative 3, plus t times 3, negative 7, and 5. Or we can use the other point, so we can also write it in terms of vector r is equal to 2, 4, 0, 2, plus t times 3, negative 7, and 5. So can someone tell me how we are able to use my vector equation to find my parametric equations?
Let's find my picture. Let's find my parametric equations using point B. So what are my parametric equations if I use point B? I need x is equal to something, y is equal to something, and I need z be equal to something as well. So I'll help you out with the first one. So the first one would be x is equal to 4 plus t times 3, plus 3t. What is my y going to equal? Negative 7t. And can someone else tell me what my z is going to equal? Someone besides Priyanshu. It's pretty easy. Madge, Anna. It's like I'm playing the Jeopardy song in my head. Thank you, two plus five T. Again, pretty freaking easy now. So now I want to find three points on each line besides the given point. So I want to find three points on the line with the vector equation OP is equal to 0, 4, 1, plus t times x, sorry, plus t times 5, negative 2, and 3. So literally, like the last lesson, I just need to sub in values of t. Can someone give me a value to sub in for t? One. So sub in t is equal to one, which means I get zero for one plus one times the direction vector, which just gives me four, negative two, negative three. And when I sub in t is equal to one, I'm going to get my point. 0 plus 5 is 5, 4 plus negative 2 is 2, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So when I sub in t equals 1, I get the point 5, 2, and 4. Someone give me a different t value. I'm not even asking you for an answer. Someone different, just throw a t value. can literally take your hand, cover it, and then press a damn number on your laptop. And press enter. Thank you. Two. Put so seven t is equal to two, which means I get zero for one plus two times five, negative two, negative three, which means I get plus 10, negative four, and six. So now I'm just gonna add these guys up. So I get 0 plus 10, that is 10, 4 plus negative 4, that is 0, and 1 plus 6, which gives me 7. So at t is equal to 2, the point on that line is 10, 0, negative 7. And last but not least, can someone else just give me another t value that I can sub in for t? We'll do 3, thank you. So t is equal to 3. I get 0 for 1 plus 15 comma negative 6 comma 9. So I get 0 plus 15, which is 15, 4 plus negative 6, which is negative 2, and 1 plus 9, which gives me 10. So when I sub in 3 for t, I'm going to get the point 15, negative 2, and 10. Thank you. 
Oh, Sebastian's here. Look at that. What's up, Sebastian? That's all good. You're not missing much. So for B, I want to find the line with parametric equations. I want to find points on the line with parametric equation. And X is equal to 1 plus 4R uh, with Y is equal to negative 3R and Z is equal to 9 plus 2R. So someone give me values, three values of R that I can figure out the points for this line. Someone give me three values of R. So R equals, R equals, R equals. Anyone? Someone, please. Jesus, what parents are you trying to like ruin my life with neck with nine? Like in one, nine, four. All right, so if I sub in negative one for R, my X value is going to be, so one plus negative four, which is going to be three, or negative three, sorry, and it's gonna be three, and nine plus two times negative one, which is nine minus two, which is gonna be seven. I spice it up with a nine, eh? Now if I sub in R for 9, for my X value, I get 1 plus 4 times 9, which is 1 plus 36, which gives me 37, then negative 27, and I get 18 plus 9, which is 27. And last but not least, I'm going to sub in R is equal to 4. So I'm going to sub it in for my X coordinate, which is going to be 1 plus 4 times 4 which gives me 1 plus 16, which gives me 17. Then negative 3 times 4, negative 12. Then 9 plus 8, which gives me 17. So that's all we're simply doing is simply solving values of R. So example 3, I want to find symmetric equations of the line through the point x, which is 2, 5, negative 3, and the point y, which is 1, 0, and 2. So how am I going to find my direction vector? What do I need to do? So my point x and my point y, what do I do to find my direction vector? We have to find x, y. We have to find vector x, y. And that means taking my head and subtracting from my tail. So I get 1 minus 2, 0 minus 5, and 2 minus negative 3. And this is going to give me negative 1, negative 5, and negative 5. And 5, sorry, what am I talking about? Whoops, positive 5. There we go. So, can my direction vector have, a, have its first component be a negative based off our first example from the first page? Does my first component have to be positive or negative? It has to be positive. So what I'm going to do to change this is I need to multiply everything by negative 1. So my direction vector is then going to become 1, 5, negative 5. So let's find our symmetric equations. Let's use our x points. 
So what would my parametric equation or symmetric equation look like if I were to use my points in X? What would they look like? Yep, x minus 2 over 1, perfect, is equal to what? What comes next? How about my y? What comes next? Symmetric equation means I need my x's, my x component, my y component, my z component. I need them to be equal to each other, just like you would do with sine law. So y minus 5 over negative 5, and which is equal to z plus 3 over negative 5. Sorry, the middle one is positive 5. That was my bad. So x minus 2 over positive 1, y minus 5 over positive 5, and z plus 3 over negative 5. Now we're going to use the same thing, except we're going to use it using y. So it's going to do x minus 1 over 1, which is equal to y over 5, which is equal to z minus 2 over negative 5. As you can see, guys, it's pretty simple stuff. Okay, There's nothing too, too crazy about this. Well, remember, both lines are, they're not. These are just points. This is one line. This is not two lines, Priyanshu. If there were two lines, uh, we would have. No, there would, there would be two lines. You're right. Coincident. It's instead of instead of an E, there's an I. Speaking of coincident, Priyanshu, that's the next example. So, in order to figure out if something is coincident, what is the first thing that we need to prove? Let's see if you guys remember from from Tuesday. To figure out if something is coincident, what do we need to figure out? Or what do we need to prove? So for example, this one is asking if the equations of the lines represent the same line. So I have L1 here, and I have line 2 over here. Yep, we need to figure out if the direction vectors are scalar multiples of each other. So the first thing we have to do is check if direction vectors are scalar multiples of each other, which means they will be parallel or collinear. So the direction vector of the first one is going to be negative 2, 10, and 4. Direction vector of the second line is going to be 1, 5, and 2. As you can see here, the first direction vector is equal to negative 2, or to, yeah, uh, oh, sorry, this has to be negative 5 and negative 2, because this has to be y minus 1 and z minus 1. That's my apologies, guys. Multiply by negative 1. Multiply by negative 1. So as you can see here, 
my direction vector one is equal to the negative two times the second direction vector, which means they are scalar multiples of each other, which means that the vectors are, they have, they may be coincident. We know for sure they're parallel, but now we need to figure out they might be coincident, they might not be. So in order for something to be coincident, the points from line one has to also be included on line number two or vice versa. So the second thing we have to do is we need to check if a point on one line lies in the other. So in this case, let's check the point 209. Let's see if that lies in line number two. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sub in two for x, zero for y, and nine for z. And we need to see if our symmetric equations are equivalent to each other. So that means line number two is equal to two minus three over one, which is equal to zero minus one over five, negative five, which is equal to nine minus one over negative two. The first one I get is negative one. The second one I get one over five. And the third one I get is negative four. So negative one does not equal one over five, and that does not equal negative four, which means that the point two zero nine does not lie on line two. So what we can conclude from this is that L1 and L2 are parallel and distinct, but they are not the same line. So because because point 209 did not lie in the second line, that means that my lines are not coincident. They're parallel, but they are not coincident. And then the last one is find the parametric equation of the line with the z-intercept 4 parallel to the line x equal to 1, y is equal to 2 plus s, and z is equal to s. So I'm going to find my direction vector based off of my uh, these parametric equations over here. So my first one, x equal 1 has no s, which means my First component is going to be 0, then I have 1s, so my next component is 1, and I have 1s for z, so my direction vector is going to be 0, 1, and 1. Remember, to find my direction vector, I just need to see the coefficient of s. Now, my z-intercept, which is given to me, going to have an x component of 0, a y component of 0, and a z component of 4. So the line that we are required is going to be our point, which is 0, 0, 
4 plus, because we can't, because S is already used, we need to find a different parameter for our new line. So we're going to use T, comma, 0, 1, 1. Therefore, my parametric equations are going to be x is equal to 0, y is equal to t, and z is equal to 4 plus t. These are my parametric equations. Yeah, exactly, Priyanshu. Uh, 